We're going to go through an entire curve sketching example. This is the type of problem that you're going to see on the quiz over 3.4 to 3.6. It's also the type of question that you're going to see on your Chapter 3 test. And it's also a question that each part could be part of like a multiple choice question on a test where they only want one piece of what we're doing. This problem is going to in, in, um, encompass everything we've talked about in Chapter 3 to this point. The qu directions say to find two derivatives, to find critical values, increasing and decreasing intervals, extrema, concavity intervals, and the points of intersection, and when it's all done, you should be able to uh, sketch a picture of it, points of inflection, sorry. We are not going to use a calculator. I'm going to try to go through one. I found one that was realistic to be done without a calculator, so you want to get in that habit. As you're studying, it's fine to take a look at a calculator when you're all done just to make sure you're right, but you want to make sure that you don't have to rely on that in any way. So you always want to start these problems by taking the derivative. Be really careful with your derivative because it does affect everything below it. I want to take that derivative and figure out when it equals 0, so I'm going to factor out a negative 3, leaving me with an x squared, a positive 4x, and a positive 3. And then factor even further, x plus 1, x plus 3. Because it is in a non-calculator environment, you know it is going to factor by hand, and you're not going to need any technology to help you. Our critical values are x equals negative 1 and x equals negative 3. We're going to set up our intervals going from negative infinity to negative 3 from negative 3 to negative 1, and from negative 1 to infinity. We're going to test our values into the first derivative because this is the test that's going to tell us if the slope is positive or negative, meaning increasing or decreasing. So if I take something like negative 4 and I put it into the first derivative, I'm putting it into this line, I get a negative times a negative times a negative. Three negatives give me a negative, which means this is a decreasing interval. Then I'm going to pick negative 2. I get a negative times a negative times a positive, which is positive, increasing. And then I use 0 is the best thing to use in that last interval. I get a negative times two positives. Gives me a negative, so it is decreasing. We had two places which it's, where it switches. Using the first derivative test, since it goes from decreasing to increasing, we do have a minimum at negative 3. And since it goes from increasing to decreasing, we are going to have a maximum at negative 1. I need to find the y values. These are points on my original function, so I'm going to use my original function. This might be the most challenging part of your quiz and your test when you don't have a calculator to do this, because you've got to do a lot of mental math or do a lot of little scratch work off to the side. If I put negative 3 into the original function and cube it, I get negative 27, but it's already negative, so it's going to become 27. Minus 6 times negative 3 squared is 9. 6 times 9 is 54, so minus 54. Minus 9 times negative 3 gives me positive. 27. So the nice thing is here, the 27 and 27 and the negative 54 will cancel. All we have left is negative 4. That is our y value. Then I put negative 1 into the original equation. I'm going to end up with a negative and a negative. So 1 minus 6 plus 9 minus 4, which is going to give me 0. So we have two extrema. We will put those on a graph in a second. Now I'm going to do my second derivative. I'm just going to make another column. So everything on this column will be dealing with the second derivative. My second derivative is negative 6x minus 12. It should get easier as you go. Take out a negative 6, leaving you with x plus 2, giving me a possible point of inflection of x equals negative 2. So I only have two intervals to test for my concavity. You're testing in your second derivative, so you always want to write that down. It helps you, and it also helps the person grading it. If I put negative 3 into the second derivative, I get a negative times a negative, which is a positive, meaning it's concave up. If I put anything bigger than negative 2 in, like 0, I get a negative times a positive, so it's negative concave down. So I do have a point of inflection at negative 2. Again, go back to the original function, because you want a y value on your graph. Uh, negative 2 cubed is negative 8, but it's already negative, so 8 minus 6 times 4 is minus 24 plus 18, minus 4. So we end up with negative 2. So now when it's time to graph it, you want to graph first all the important points, which are all the extrema or all the points of inflection that you have found. And sometimes it even helps to write down next to it what it is, not just plot it. So negative 3, negative 4 is going to be right here, and that's going to be a minimum. Negative 1, 0 is right here. That's going to be a maximum. Sometimes it helps me to write down what it's supposed to be so that I can make sure my picture makes sense. 
negative 2, negative 2 is right here, and that's supposed to be a point of inflection. That's the toughest one to see. It's more subtle. Now you want to start from the very beginning and look at what you have in the beginning of your increasing decreasing and in the beginning of your concavity. In the very first interval, at the very beginning, you are decreasing and you are concave up. So to get to the minimum, you're going to be decreasing concave up, so it looks something like this. From that minimum, now we're at x equals negative 3. We are now increasing and we are still concave up until we get to negative 2. So we're increasing, but still concave up. The concavity hasn't switched yet. It's not going to switch until you get to that point of inflection. Now we're at negative 2. We are still increasing. We've got to get to that maximum, but we've switched concavity to concave down. So it's a really subtle switch. Some people draw it really dramatic so you can see it, but it is very subtle. And then once you hit the maximum, we're at negative 1. For the rest of the graph, we are decreasing and we are concave down. So the rest of the graph looks like this. And that is as specific as your graph needs to be. You have all the pieces having the right shape, the right increasing versus decreasing. So you have that slope and you have the key points identified on your graph. This is an example of a perfect answer, what I'm looking for when you take a test or a quiz and ask to do a full curve sketch problem.